Welcome. You're listening to the Rutten River Pursuits Podcast. Join our epic pro staff around the Sonic Campfire for stories and adventures from our eastern mountains to the Chesapeake Salt. Let our highs and lows inspire you to take to the outdoors. You're listening to the Rutten River Pursuits Podcast. This is Uncle Buck, and to my left is... Sammy P. Catfish. I'm Steve. I'm Ryan. And I'm Will. How's everybody doing tonight? Excellent. Good, buddy. Awesome. Never Wonderful. better. Hey, I'm doing pretty good, too. Good to hear everybody's in great spirits. What's new, guys? Mm, new. There's a lot of newness. <laughs> Lots of newness. <laughs> I'll tell you from my perspective. What is it? Tell me. This past Saturday was the Mentored Youth Trout Day for Pennsylvania. Nice. What? Yeah, buddy. How'd that Uh, go? It went pretty well. Uh, My two kids that uh, were interested, I got three, but the oldest, you know, she's a teenage girl. She's too cool for it. Right. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Too cool for school. The good news is, or, or I guess the best part of the story really was that my son learned a pretty valuable lesson, but he got, uh, quite the souvenir out of the ordeal yeah um first cast right at eight o'clock you know everybody else is throwing these big old golf ball sized chunks of power bait like a like a 16 inch softball yeah it's (laughs) i they use like a whole jar of power bait on (laughs) on like a size two treble hook i don't know (laughs) but but you know i look throwing out a cow's in (laughs) it takes talent to keep that on the hook they just have to eat it for three hours just to get down to the hook but you know we're walking walking up and down the creek as you know we got there pretty early and walking up down the creek i looked at my son and i just said mealworms Mealworms is the way to go this morning. Everybody else is throwing all this other junk. Throw something. Give them their and, mealworms. And, of course, 8 o'clock hits. All, all the all the lines hit the water. It's just complete chaos. But my son was the first one. I mean, he just he laid into one. And about 14 and a half, 15-inch trout that wow. he ended up landing. Nice trout. And uh, helped him. You know, he had a perfect little lip hook on it. Helped him get that thing off the line um, onto his stringer and handed him his stringer. Because I looked over, my daughter was getting into something. So I'm, you know, hustling up the creek to go help her. So he put it on, he got it in. Yeah, landed it. On the stringer. I put it on the stringer for him, showed him how to do it all just right. Tossed a hook, and there's some more drama coming. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. feeling it. Yeah, well, that's that's the way it works. Because as soon as I get down to my daughter, I look over because I heard some commotion going on down there, and I heard him go, there goes my stringer. Oh, oh. Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one of those cheap mm-hmm. stringers with like that three inch little metal uh, spike. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he drops this fish in the water, sticks the spike down in a nice soft mud at the creek bank. And this fish just dunk, darted right to the center of the stream and pulled it right out of the mud. Ping. Yep. Does it just go to the middle of the stream and you can see the stringer the whole He's, time? He said he could see it, but till I got down there, I'm looking for it. I'm like, he must have pulled it into the deep, buddy, because yeah. I don't see it. He goes, I saw it for a while. He gone. <laughs> he gone. Well, as luck would have it, of course, about 10 minutes later from across the creek, we hear, hey, buddy, got your stringer? <laughs> no. No. And your fish is on it. No. <laughs> no. Damn. no. Cherry on top. Yeah, he, he must have snagged the uh, the stringer and pulled it in. And as he was pulling the stringer out of the water, sure enough, fish is still on the end of it. Wow. So he got the fish back and he got his new lucky uh, stringer back. I Perfect. Told That's crazy. That keep that thing in, equipment there. Keep yeah, that thing in your vest. You had to catch that fish twice, and now you got a lucky stringer. So, nice. So both both kids had a pretty good day then. Though. Yes. Yeah. That was my son that went through that whole old, whole ordeal. Um, my daughter, my youngest, is only nine. She doesn't screw up like that. She's the, she's the fisher. Is she fisher person mm-hmm. uh, in the group? You know, she don't mess up. She she put two on the stringer and. She wanted to keep going. Stone Cold Creeler. Yeah, yeah. she's... I like it. Creeler. I like it. I don't know. Hashtag that. I'm reaching. That. SCC. Stone Cold Creeler. There's a real good. good chance that section of streams going to be flooded this coming weekend for yeah. opening day, but uh, she still wants to go. She don't well, care. She's cool. not, not After holding tomorrow back. with one to two inches. Yeah. That is so is that what the, the weather's supposed to be like tomorrow? Yeah. Up, up here, yeah. So, so how's that going to affect us for uh, striper fishing tomorrow night? Saturday morning. We'll find out. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be nice on Saturday. So. I can't wait to stand on the beach with you Saturday morning in the cold, rainy, wet. No, no, it won't be raining Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call for no, day. Sammy, there's no rain. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie <laughs> always lies to me to get me to go fishing. <laughs> Why no, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Sammy the honest. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was... Uh, uh, cornfield in uh, Christmas Day. Oh, I'll call you up the night before. Rain. I got a feeling. Yeah, that's feel like getting sick for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring them in. Speakless. Speaking Let's of learn. Like, harmless, uh, harmless uh, fibbing to people. I I got a I got something new. The new R two go kart is in town. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Did you have to tell a lie? No, uh, the guy who sold it to me didn't quite tell me all the story about it. <laughs> okay, so I take that as a well, you know a nonchalant fib like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I mean, you got it. Well, run. so let, so I guess yeah. it was yeah, from what you're saying is you bought a go kart as is. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I, I showed up at Chris Fish's house and uh, he wanted to show me his new crabbing boat, little like a uh, seventeen foot fiberglass. Had some questions about it, and perfect. So he had a fourteen foot John boat in the back with a trailer. And we went back to look at it to, uh, you know, uh, like maybe Jimmy Hunt would buy it or Logan ended up buying it. So um, boats everywhere. Yeah, but I had no interest in the fourteen foot John boat. But I did happen to look over and go, yeah, what's that? And he, it was uh, it was like a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton little racing go kart, double person racing go kart. You know, four bald tires, completely old looking Flintstone mobile. But I said, "Does it run?" He said, "Yeah, you don't." Uh, Maybe. Let me go get my boy Chase. And <laughs> Chase drug it out into the street, and you know, we pumped the tires up. And I told him, "I said, I'll buy it from you if it runs." Poured some green. And yeah, it's her, uh, oh, you know, little fire, little fluid, ice. <laughs> yeah, pretty much starter fluid. Pulled the rope, rope ripped out of it. We had to take oh, it apart, put uh, the rope back in. But uh, once the rope held, it fired right up. Chase jumped in it. You know, it's Chase is like twenty, you know, eighteen, twenty years old, and he he tore off down the street right to downtown Gettysburg. You know, nice and level. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, he was gone. Like I mean, it was it was loud. No muffler on it. Did a bit, you know, I saw him coming back and he's, you know, he spun it out in front of me and, I, yeah. and just stopped right in front of my truck. I said, heck yeah, 40 bucks. Put it in my truck. Load 40 bucks. 40 bucks. So that doesn't even sound like an, an as is deal. I mean, that thing was running oh, and man. looks good. Throw yeah. it in the truck. Here we go. <laughs> You're probably looking back as what you could know, go wrong? Oh, like in my sore. eyes, I could just see yeah. flat black spray paint and yeah. like orange, you know, or two. Uh, trim work on it, four new tires and a muffler. Why yeah. not? You know, that's, I'm taking it home and, and fixing this baby up for us. Sammy ordering some decals for you. Yeah. So, well, we'll put the deca- decals on after we dip it. You know, my neighbor's got a pool. We could dip the whole thing all at once. <laughs> oh, <I love> it. <laughs> Here's the kicker: the little white lie that wasn't told to me. Yeah. So I ran home with it. Yeah. Like any, you know, any good redneck would do. I drug it right out of the truck in the driveway. Yeah. And uh, flopped her on the ground, pulled that cord, jumped in it, took took off up the driveway. It was running, right? Oh, my God, did it run. And we'll you didn't shoot yourself in the <laughs> no eye. No problem. It? Yeah. It'll, it'll go. No problem. No problem. Nice. Flew up the driveway, made uh-huh. a left turn. A few hundred yards down the road, it was just, it would, it, it picked up speed the whole time. I could have kept going faster and faster. And, nice. You know, I did a big, giant U-turn. There's like a, you know, like a cul-de-sac looking like U-turn down by the crap plant. <laughs> flew back up towards the house yeah. you know i live in a gated community so with no muffler on it you got to get back before people start looking out windows <laughs> i'm flying with it and make the right hand turn down my driveway and you know f- my driveway is for all intents and purposes the the, the very first dip on fahrenheit 911 in hershey park <laughs> like it is it is straight down yeah. give or take 50 yards to the bottom and there's nothing but trees there's rocks and trees so halfway down the driveway, I realize no hands. There's no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no damn brakes. <laughs> but you had your helmet and seatbelt on. Oh yeah, of course I did. Yeah, yeah. Safety first, I got, kids. Safety first. My my safety is my 14 year old rubber boots I have on, and I <laughs> threw my left leg off the side. <laughs> and just jammed it into the front left wheel trying to slow down. You can't feel that foot anyway. I can't. 
<laughs> I got it to spin out just enough power sliding in it to kind of make the 90 degree turn. But I mean, it was either A, and this is all microseconds to make this decision. A <laughs> smashed into the Mitsubishi, ex, ex, the Mitsubishi uh, Eclipse. Right. Um, hit my truck, which is no go. No. Uh, hit either one of the garage doors, but it has to hit something to stop because oh. I'm going like thirty. Yeah. And I got like ten feet to make a decision. Or down through the camp. And or Lacey's down. not down there with a mattress. No. 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 Yeah. yeah. So it or down through the camp into the creek. Yeah. yeah. Which would have been, but. Uh, something subconsciously told me to go ahead and hit the old washer and dryer we have sitting in the <laughs> in the driveway that I haven't taken to the dump yet. And st- strategically placed. Oh man, like a backstop. I mean, it, it sounded like a small bomb going off because I I put an eight foot dent in the washing machine, <laughs> and the dryer that was sitting next to it got pushed almost three feet away because it pushed all the energy through the washer into the dryer and. It stopped me dead, so... You almost earned another eight hours at work, but the hard way. Oh, I know it. I jumped off, made sure the neighbors weren't looking at me. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here, drug it in the garage, and then sat around looking at it with a monster and going, this thing's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the new I, R2 go-karts. There's definitely going to be more stories surrounding oh, that Oh, I day. can't wait to get it out with I, you. So I did fix the brakes. I'm thinking, you know, Stevie's got to... Draw up some waivers for us because it's like old Ben Roethlisberger racing around on motorcycles, oh, yeah. and <laughs> crashing that one year. Yeah, you yeah. can't get hurt for the podcast. That's that's in the underline. <laughs> we need small print. We need you guys, so please be careful with your extracurricular activities. <laughs> but if you're going to crash it, pull all the R2 stickers off before the paramedics get there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, how can you go wrong? There's no muffler. It's loud. I mean, it. You can't really hurt it any more than it already is, and it's forty bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. don't worry about it. You just bent that bar back straight. <laughs> you know what I mean? We might get lucky. Here's the thing: had I done what my wife told me to do and take the washer and dryer to the dump a month ago, there would have been nothing to stop me. So it might happen for a reason. You yeah. might have been dead. You saved yourself. We could be podcasting from the hospital. Procrastination now. pays off. I may leave that washer and dryer there for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> That's now your lucky equipment. Who knows next That's time? That's your lucky washer and dryer. Now. I might get chased by a bear next time and have to climb in there to save it. <laughs> exactly. You said that's a two-seater. That's a two-seater. So, like, you and I could, you know. We'd have to spoon a little bit. Yeah, we'd get in there. <laughs> Sammy and Kyle. <laughs> yeah. No, two people can, two, there's not two separate I'll seats. It's just, yeah. like, a wide I'll bench seat. I'm cool with that. You just got to jam your right foot in the front of, <laughs> in the other in the other tire. You just got to be the I other side of the brake system. <laughs> I'll hang my right leg out or something. Yeah, Lacey come down away. and said, "What's that?" I went, "That's awesomeness." <laughs> you just <laughs> wait till it's done. Forty bucks I ever spent. Speaking of awesomeness, I think Sammy P did some awesomeness. Awesomeness. Oh yeah, that weekend. Awesomeness. 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 Yeah. Down That's in Maryland. Shooting. General P and his little lieutenant. Yep, my nephew. I want to brag about shooting more clays with my shotgun. I oh, heard boy. that. <laughs> I did hear that, that, the, that Austin did. He out, was in out. a different group, so it doesn't count. And you probably didn't have your Benelli, <laughs> or did you? Oh, he had the Benelli. Yours? Yeah. He has oh. like six of them. That's like saying you didn't have the Benelli. What? <laughs> well... <laughs> Oh, I know. I went to Sammy's you know, house. his precious. <laughs> one time, and he opened up his gun locker to show me some of his guns. And, I mean, it was only, the gun safe was only cracked four or five inches, and already I could see a line of Benelli waterfowl guns. It's like the power of God emanating from yeah. that thing. Yeah. There's like, what is it? Tell us, Sammy. Four, four or five waterfowl guns. Yeah, at know. least. <laughs> That's but awesome. Now, so, uh, we were down at uh, Hartwoods Outdoors. Uh, Tracy Groves camp. Um, it was a men's retreat that weekend. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Shooting, uh, it was. It was a, it shooting was a retreat. So I'm, I'm supposed to bring you guys down next year. Even if we just go down for the Saturday, we don't have to go Friday night. Gotcha. Yeah, it's well worth it. It was fun. Um, we uh, got there. We left early Saturday morning, got there. About seven, sure. Seven thirty. Bunch of shooting of, uh, games and yeah. like archery and shotgun. Twenty uh, twos, twenty two rimfire. Um, first round in the morning was uh, twenty two rimfire and uh, rifle. How, how's and, that run? You 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 scopes or you uh, scopes or iron sights, whatever you have. You got to shoot it offhand. Yeah, but you got to shoot it offhand. Um, 
You get 10 shots, and whoever gets the closest out of the – the it's from 18 and older. So that's the older group and then the yeah. younger group from, sure. uh, I don't know, I think 12. Yeah. 12 to 17, so – Nice. Next year, my so nephew's you, got a... Was it like a carnival you had to cut out the star? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you had that. And then we had went down to offhand with a rifle. Three shots with that. Uh, whoever was closest. There wasn't a lot of people that were really close. Really? No. Um, Shooting offhand stuff. And you, you did pretty well. well. I did pretty well. I think uh, Tracy's brother was pretty pleased with that, I thought. Yeah. Because he's like, the first shot I took, I was in the black. And he looked, hey, you need to know where you shot. Nope, I know where I shot. You just, uh, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> but, uh, what the hang? And then, uh, then, uh, we went up, after we were done with that, we went up and shot the throwing, uh, disc archery targets, which was a blast. How about that? Yeah. I love that. I saw some of those pictures, that aerial, arch- you guys aerial have archery a, stuff. Pretty you can, if I was thinking this, I could make some serious dough off that. I know. That well, archery, like I, at sportsman uh, shows, like at yeah. uh, banquets or whatever. Like We have a field day down at our club. Yeah. Kids, everybody was going to do that. Yeah, it's so much fun. And, and I was actually at the ATA with Tracy whenever we – Looked at the machine and uh, I, I just kind of look, you know, edged my way over to the booth and I and I sat and I kind of just sat down and Trace is like, "Come on, man, this is a bad deal. <laughs> Why are you doing this?" <laughs> you know, and I'm like, "Well, I just want to look at it. Let's yeah. just talk about it. Let's just see what you know." Those machines were sweet. Oh yeah, yeah. and I'll so, tell you, the pictures that Sammy put up that got me thinking. I might actually try to break out my old recurve yeah and it's go fun. pheasant hunt with recurve. you guys yeah um, i'm gonna take a pheasant hunt though nice i've done, i've tried it it's tough i've not oh, hit one before i'm not gonna get nothing but i'm gonna take it yeah. it's like yeah. tread barda loose some arrows i threw some flu flu arrows before it's i didn't get close <laughs> i just shot them at him but i didn't get close so so you had a um, big weekend you won some yeah you won a little bit yeah um and the, there was a big you know just a nice guys weekend yeah that's perfect um, yeah, the food was good. I mean, uh, you had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And you got fed well, so. <laughs> That's awesome. We had, what was it, a uh, sausage egg, bacon, and potatoes in the morning. We had sub, make your own sandwiches. Did they have that. enough for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. filled you up. And then, uh, supper we actually had, it was almost like a stir fry. They had broccoli, chicken, and whatever, like carrots, peas, whatever, one. And they had rice with kabasca, kabaski or kabasa, or whatever. Yeah, kielbasa. Sausage. Mixed up, so you could put that on top of it. I mean, um, and then they had a steak. Whoa. Or sausage, different kind of sausage you could put on whatever However you nice. want to get so, out just for dinner. Um, is this a food yeah, retreat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cooking retreat. <laughs> cooking so, retreat. Yeah. Wonder you got you that good. So happy. Yeah, very cool. Nice. Anybody else have anything new? I got something new. What's up? First of all, yes. Is, is yeah, I, I want to cut you. It, it's sitting in your drive. Truck still running. Oh, yeah. He didn't go outside to look yet. It's, he didn't it's making sense. It was it was running when it got here. Is it running when he leaves? Sammy's <laughs> boys hooked him up. Oh, yeah. Yep. How yeah. about that? Oh, Central Auto. Yeah, we just got done paying one of the trucks we got $5,000. Yeah, speaking of that, though, you guys like to give me a lot of guff over my Ford F-150, but those boys out of Central Auto was telling me a little stories about Sammy's. GMs. Oh, the, uh, the Greenskeepers. Yeah. Chevys and everything keep on showing up there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's so, new for you, Phil? Well, my big new thing is... You know, for all of you who have noticed the technical issues in the last episode that was dropped, you can blame that all on me. What's that yeah. mean? That what? means I was the new R2 uh, engineer. I was wondering who to send that email to. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm the reason why you sound like crap. So you you edited po- the whole podcast? Not the whole podcast. I had some a strong elbow support by the uh, 
R, the, the, the R2, R2 engineer, engineer yeah. like primary engineer. I feel like he's on Optimus the, Prime. Like we need to give him a name like the Stig or something, you know, <laughs> the R2 engineer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with a lot of elbow support, what would normally take him probably an hour took me three. Yeah. But I have a whole new appreciation to, for what we do and, and, and the final product that comes out. So, yeah. But, I noticed you're a lot of, you know, you're sitting in your seat a little bit. You're like in the pocket a little bit better. You know, I'm not trying to move my voice. Jumping around, around. humping a football. Exactly. A little <laughs> bit more calm. <laughs> uh, uh, adding a little space on the beginning and end of things. <laughs> things are good. I'm not repeating myself. I, uh, I'm that yeah. that that was necessary. I think for both of us. I, I think I think for almost you're like almost like the C- Cesar Chavez, not Cesar Chavez, but I don't know what that means. But, uh, what's the the dog the whisperer dog? do? Cesar Milan. Milan. Cesar Milan. <laughs> Cesar Chavez. Chavez Milan. Like, well, we were talking Whatever. about Cuba earlier. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, but you know Cesar Milan. You totally like reverse psychology. Phil, I want you to edit. Hey, you know, Phil, do this. But I had no idea. That you edited it, so that was Kyle's one, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, that was all things Kyle. I, it, I, I didn't know you edited. it. I guess that's a glowing review, yeah. right? If he didn't yeah. know you edited it, yeah, or or that means the teacher's I'm doing terrible. a great job. No, no, no that no, no, <laughs> you're not terrible at all. I mean, you you're the magic behind the behind the show. Really. No, it's cool. It it's there's a real tactile end to it that you know, like there's. Um, you know, there's a lot of feel that goes into it and, and you, did you ever realize what you have to listen to to make things make sense? No, it, yeah. no, it, 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 and, and just, just listening to it, it was a third perspective too, because being behind the mic, you're always worried about what you're going to say and listening for a follow up question. And then I, before editing, I was able to then listen as a consumer as, yeah. as someone that wanted to be entertained but then when you're editing you're you're listening for pauses for for repeating just to help the crew move stuff along it move it along sound speaking a little of, bit better speaking of moving now just <laughs> no no you got anything new will i do um so i just really quickly this came across the wire we had um the uh some changes in our hunting season big time changes the in, in pa uh number one is the 25 dollar pheasant stamp um which you know let's just give it a little bit of a uh some you know give, give it a, a chance shot. yeah right i'm willing to wait till the end of next season before i even comment on it yeah i, I think that you gotta we gotta see what is delivered after the demand the, the call uh, for more. Next if I'm getting the long bow out or the recurve out and you, you guys want? are pushing the birds for me, I'll still pay the twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Just to give it a try. Fair enough. I'll pay twenty five bucks to lose some arrows. Yeah. Uh archery season gets an overlap of bear and deer. Um, which is pretty fantastic. I mean I've I've seen bear before deer season and I've seen bear after deer season. Yeah. But I, never but never during bear season. Uh 5B gets uh, a fall turkey hunt. Nice. Whoop, whoop. That's new. I mean, yeah, that's, that's big because they haven't had turkeys for a long time. That's me. That's in my backyard. That's hey. awesome. I'm just right across from the border of it. It's so nice to be able to get it. You're in 5B. Yeah, you're in 5B. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, right. Buddy. But I'm right on the edge from the, <laughs> gotcha. the next WA gotcha. and you, and it's always C. tough. Yeah. And then uh, the last thing that is kind of there's a bunch of things, but you know, last thing is that uh, the bucks only statewide first week. Yeah. So I like that. That sucks. And then I'm about to pick my mother game up this year again. I guess so. I guess so. But there's one big, big thing I guess that's been in the news about the new rules too. Oh, is the the semi autos? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that, I guess the no big game, which is your bear, turkey, and deer, but we can use them for small game, yep. fur bear. Yeah, coyotes. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Awesome. That's it. Sounds good. Anything uh, else there, big guy? I want to throw a shout out real quick and thank the guys, Wayne and, uh, you know, the president of the Frankstown Sportsman's Club and not just him, but everybody down there. Um, you know, I took dad out shooting this past weekend when I was home and, uh, 
uh, having to shoot from a wheelchair. He, he, you know, his ability to go out and shoot archery after a bunch of big surgeries was uh, almost taken from him once again. But we got out this week, and uh, he he jammed some arrows and some yellow, and we had a good time. But uh, that's good. You know, we, that, that club has been a part of me since I could walk. Yeah. Um, and they've always had open arms and invited us in, and. Uh, you know, dad's been, you know, on the board and everything down there, but as, as time progressed and dad got older, it's, uh, they're still extremely cool to us. I mean, we got keys to the club come anytime you want to use it, whether they're there or not. And to have an archery range inside a whole club to yourself for me and dad to get down and shoot with nobody else around is epic enough. But when those guys show up, it's, they're really cool to dad and, and everybody else. I mean, they're cool to the kids when they shoot and, you know, they have women shooting and, so anyhow, thank you, Frankstown Sportsman's Club, for thank always being guys. there for us and, uh, you that's, know, just being, uh, you know, awesome to people. That's just good people right there. It that's is. Good it, stuff. It's that's a good nice. small town club, so go check them out and join with them. And it's like $10 a year, rifle ranges, pistol ranges, oh. indoor archery ranges, dinners, and it's a very small club, but I think they've got like 100 members. That's how so you treat people. 200, right I don't know. If we, if, if the R2 guys joined, we'd double their membership. Absolutely. Yeah, their their winter leagues for shooting is. I mean, they got nice stuff. Yeah, and nice targets and all. So thanks, awesome. guys. Awesome. You know, speaking of treating people right, guys, we got a gentleman out tonight as our guest, uh, Greg Kreps with Pradco Outdoor Brands, who treats people right. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. Hi, Hi guys. How are y'all? Good. Awesome. Real good. Good. Ne- good. Ne- never better. Never better. <laughs> Having a great night. Uh, how's it going, Greg? How are you? I'm good. I'm great. I'm uh, sitting here in my office and uh, got the the lab sitting here at my feet. And she just heard my wife come in the side door up here just a little while ago, so she jumped up and ran over to the steps looking for her. So awesome. Nice. What's your lab's name? Kreps. K R E P S. No, your lab, the dog. Oh, the lab. <laughs> the lab <laughs> so your dog got that Krebs, one Krebs. out, right? Oh, Krebs, Krebs. Yeah. No. Really the, proud of that the lab, lab name. name is, <laughs> yeah, yeah well, her last name's Krebs, right? <laughs> That's a good Krebs. Uh, no, her name is Mia. Mia. Mia, after Mia the Krebs. movie Prince, Princess or Princess Diaries or whatever it is or something like that, my uh, daughter named her Princess Princess Mia. Yeah, you know. never saw it. Well, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, when, when you have little girls, yeah, you will watch that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure they reviewed that on the Broom View. <laughs> they might have. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So your office is in your house. Yes, my office is in my house. Uh, matter of fact, my wife and I both work from home, which is kind of a neat little deal. She works for a big corporation here near Hagerstown, and my office is in the basement, and hers is upstairs in one of the bedrooms. Oh, man, Greg. So you get to get up in your PJs, bedhead, grab a cup of coffee, and head right to the office. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not like that. No, no, no. I, I, like I said, I got too much of the military coming out into me, out of me, because I, I have to get up in the morning and take my shower and shave and brush my teeth and get dressed, then get my coffee and then walk the twelve steps down into the basement to where my office is located. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Long commute. Do yeah, have, the commute. The commute is horrible. It really is. <laughs> on the way down the steps, do you have Reveille or? Uh... Uh, no, no, no flag raising ceremonies or anything like that. Those days are over with. So this is, this is ridiculous. You're telling me that you get up and you go downstairs to work, and you yes, you talk to you, you talking to people on the phone. Uh, not so much. Every once in a while, uh, with the position I have no today, most everything's done over the computer through internet, and so you don't even have to talk to anybody. <laughs> Usually, I don't know. Huh? What? Making matters yeah. worse. I'm going to go back to my high school and and scold my my counselor, my high school counselor, because they never told me about this job. <laughs> <laughs> what the hang? <laughs> what the hang? It's ridiculous. Oh, by the way, Mr. Fry, you know that you can just go to bed, get up, walk downstairs, make a few phone calls, punch a few buttons, and make lots and lots of money and make people happy. Do you yeah. know that? No, nope, well, they never told know, me that's, that. That's... 
They, they, That's the way it's getting in today's world of technology and, and workplaces. Is everybody's commuting? Um, you know, to cut down on you know vehicles and, and emissions and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the electricity that these companies are running to keep their buildings and stuff open. Sometimes it's just easier to pay those folks just to work from home. Man, makes sense. No, she told yep. me more about going out sitting on I beams and welding in the rain and putting tubes up people's butt in radiology. That's what they. That's what she told me about. She didn't tell me nothing about no home job <laughs> i'd never get anything done if i worked from home i'd be yeah. like ah work yeah. nope nope i gotta dust the turkey decoys today nope well yeah you gotta be self-motivated i can tell you that sure. i mean you you gotta know what you do what you're doing and, and stick to the plan you know every once in a while i have a little diversion i'll walk out on the other side of the the girl or the basement here out to my workbench and i'll see something laying on the workbench and i'll catch myself going to do it and then it's like oh nope i can't be doing this i gotta get back over here and get back to work again so yeah so where's the office at where are you located i am i am in clear spring maryland's where i'm at just uh west of hagerseppe not far from us <laughs> nice that's real close to us then Great. yeah i'll be down there real there. close yeah i'll be yeah, down there in not- hagerseppe this weekend <laughs> yeah. my, 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 wife, Sippy, huh? <laughs> my wife's family lives down in hagerstown yeah I, I remember. Okay. I remember. It was Christmas morning when I pulled my shoulder out and I had to walk over to the hospital at five in the morning. And there was like two other. There was like two other people there that were lonely on Christmas morning. Wait, 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 wait. How do you pull your shoulder out at five o'clock in the morning? Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> wrapping presents at the last minute. <laughs> This is a very short podcast. <laughs> Just another statistic. No, I actually, I actually fell down the back steps where it was icy, trying to, to sneak out back to pee outside. So, oh no! That, I mean, if you want an honest, honest, I, actually, no, no, no. I, I was no, out make something up. Yeah. <laughs> I was out walking you know, to I, eight teacup Yorkies that are my. <laughs> And, and they pulled them down. I thought we were bad down here in Hagerstown. You guys don't have indoor plumbing up there in Pennsylvania. Well, here's the thing. You know, I'm not quite sure if my mother-in-law ever does listen to this, but her house is like a museum, and they're trained to like sit down to pee so you don't get pee everywhere. And I just don't do that. I'm so I'd rather yeah, pee outside yeah. than to be told to sit to pee. I mean, it, I, yeah. I don't take my shoes yeah. off in my house, but. You know, I got to take my hoodie off and my boots off and everything to go and sit on the couch and watch TV. And I mean, don't get me wrong. They're wonderful people. They're just, I wasn't brought up like that, you know, too. Yep, yep. I understand. Everything has its place <laughs> and everything's clean. And, you know, there's still deer blood stains on the kitchen floor, on the laminate floor from whenever I was like 15. And they just don't come out. So, <laughs> Not in that house, no. That, it's, Not in that yeah. house, huh? I slipped, I slipped and fell down the steps, and I already have, I have like a bad shoulder at times, and it it just drove me nuts. My hand was hurting, and so I went over and told the guy, and, you know, I need a Christmas morning quarter zone shot. Hurry up. So, But, yeah, they're real close. They're real close. I'll be down there this weekend working on Grandma has a laundromat not far from there, too. They all live down there. So. Well, you have to give me a shout or give me a call. Maybe we can get together and have lunch or something like that. I'd be glad to meet you. Absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah. You can come help me work on the laundromat. <laughs> no. <laughs> he works from home. You I can. got projects I got projects here I need to get taken care of. Pull yourself away from the office for a minute. <laughs> so, well, where do you where do you work, Greg? I work for Pradco Outdoor Brands. Um, Pradco, a lot of people don't understand what, what the act or the initials stand for, but it's actually plastics research and development company. We were actually a molded, uh, injection molded um, company where we made parts for Maytag, Whirlpool, appliances, and so forth out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Well, and that was back in, you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and then, you know, later on as things come around and people start going overseas for cheaper labor and that sort, it kind of left us hanging a little bit. So they had all these plastics injection molding machines, and gentleman approached them one day, and he had this idea, this balsa lure, and he wanted to know if we could make it out of plastics. I was just going to say, it sounds like some it fishing said, lures. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, so we, we took a look at it, and we said, we, we, yeah, we can do that. 
So we made a mold up and started uh, plastic inject molding uh, plastic lures, and today the the name of the company company is Rebel Lures. Okay. So it, it's been around for for years, and um, and it's just spawned you know into other lures and items and hunting products and things of that sort so yeah that's it's a whole big package oh it's a big yeah i mean and that's a kind of an understatement there's a lot of uh brands underneath that pradco outdoor company correct yes yes you have lots of brands under that umbrella so the genesis was it was rebel crayfish i love rebel crayfish oh i still have rebel crayfish it's still one of my it, everybody. Words. If you open, if you open anybody's tackle box, if anybody is a fisherman out there, it doesn't matter whether they're eighty years old or they're eighteen years old. When you open your tackle box up, somebody's going to have a rebel crayfish in that tackle box or more. But more likely, yeah, it'll be a rebel crawdad in there. I have the first it, edition. It, I'm just letting you know. I have like the first, like number three, like the number third one made. Yeah, 1950. Really? Yeah. It was wow. just, it was just gray back then because they couldn't paint. They didn't have a paint machine yet. It's just gray. It's like the, yeah. the gray plastic. Yeah. And that also yeah, the paints the paints they used back in those days. You know the adhesion to them and stuff like that. I mean, to, compared to today, it is just you know phenomenal. You're the talking they, Stevie's they, language they, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's an engineer. <laughs> he's an engineer. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I make windows, though, not uh, <laughs> <laughs> lures. <laughs> not fishing lures, unfortunately. But what, what are some of the other names re- uh, represented under Pragco, Greg? Okay, well, so on our, on our, since we were talking about fishing, I might as well continue on there with uh, Pradco fishing. We, you know, we have bomber saltwater, we have bomber freshwater. Bomber, that's. I think I, yeah. I have a couple Badonka donks. That's made by Bomb. Yep, right? that's that's the saltwater version. Yep, of the uh, we have a we have a slow sinking model and a floating model. But yeah, the Badonka donk is a, a very popular one. Yep. Stevie's got the first edition to them too. <laughs> I have the first edition <laughs> Badonka donk. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just last you week. All have, you all probably have one of these. I think you, you know, divorced company <laughs> you know, with the head and, tor- head and torpedoes. <laughs> oh, everybody, yeah. Torpedoes were the thing on the Junior at a river growing up. Top water, absolutely. Yep. You guys right, do have right. crazy names for fishing lures. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you. Yes, it is. It is a different market for that. But yeah, the, you know, Little Joe with uh, pole floats uh, for cat fishermen and stuff like that. Uh, here, you know, I mentioned Rebel was one of our brands. Arbogast, another brand that's jitterbug. been in our line yeah, for yeah. years. A, a good, steady brand, just like Rebel with uh, the jitterbugs and the yeah. hula poppers. And here again, you know, how many people you know that, that own at least one or two of those in their tackle box? Yeah. So. Uh, still floats, uh, you know, they're big into freshwater, saltwater, any type of float, pole float, um, you know, they're made from balsa, some of them are made from plastic, some are slip floats, some are spring model floats, you know, where you can stationary on your line. Uh, Lindy is, you know, more known for walleye fishing, uh-huh. uh, perch fishing up in the north, so we have all those products. Creek Chub is another brand we have. Booyah. I'm sure you all heard of Booyah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We have the, the Booyah line. We have Silver Thread, Cotton Cordell, Yum Soft Plastic, wow. Smithwick Lures, Bandit, and we just acquired Norman about a year ago. You're so basically. that, rounds out, the, that you, rounds out the fishing side of the business. And you can do all of that. From your kitchen. <laughs> I can do all that from my basement. Yes, I can. So I can't wait to tell my friends I met a guy that makes every lore on the planet from his kitchen window, from his basement. No, that's awesome. How, the, the, the injection molding, do you guys, can you guys do, like, do you guys do anything bigger? Kayaks or no? No, no. Most of what we have right now is is all fishing lures and stuff like that. I was just saying because I might have an idea for the perfect kayak. (laughs) Hey, keep it to yourself right now. Let's not talk about it. Don't give it out. No, that's too. I think I think most of those most of those today are our roto mold. Yeah, the roto mold. mold. I mean, your less lesser expensive models, you know, are more injected molds, but the higher end ones, the higher quality ones, are more roto mold. Don't jump to conclusions. He might have. Uh, uh, an idea for an injected mold one. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> a lot of people listen to this show. Now, wait a minute. I'm not saying a full-size kayak. I'm talking about... Half-size. No, it's for my teacup, Yorkie. They want to go kayak with it. Teacup, oh, Yorkie. Oh, gorge. Okay. It's a small kayak now. Uh, so that fishing stuff kind of is new news to me um, because my interactions with Greg have been a lot more on the hunting side of things. Um, right. With- yep. yep. We have a, we have four brands, or we call them our fall brands. Uh, we represent Moultrie feeders and cameras. We represent Summit tree stands. Um, we have Night and Hail game calls and Code Blue scents and lures. Nice. Wow. Yep. That's good stuff. That's yeah. Yeah. That's Everybody awesome. asked me, so what, what do you do for a living? I said, I sell duck calls, deer calls, and deer pee. And they look at you kind of cross-eyed. You're like, what? <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> now, all, catfish drinks deer urine for breakfast. Yeah. That's not a cereal. I, you know what? I did I did break a bottle of doe urine in my truck one time. And in my, I'm telling you, it took... It took every bit of a month driving with my head out the window. Uh, it, it was as bad as skunk. It was as bad as a skunk spray. It was one of them yeah, old glass bottles, pretty, and it broke. Oh. I threw the I threw the oh. bow case on top of it, and it cracked. It, it I, must have been old and outdated because the the new stuff, the fresh stuff, I I love it. No, there's something wrong with me. I'm no, this lying, this, this was an old bottle, and yeah. what was in it was like a like a coffee looking urine. <laughs> it was <laughs> all all the ammonia, like you renal broke failure, dough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> dough and renal failure, dough and renal failure. You know what? <laughs> yeah. We call that a yeast infection. <laughs> I uh, one of my famous follies is I hit the the spray, and I thought you know to check the wind a little bit yeah and it was a tarsal gland and it blew right back into my <laughs> I remember face. that i could taste it, it i was, remember that it was horrible <laughs> 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 Greg, did you get it in your mouth? Oh yeah, I could tape like it from the rest of the the hunt, like the whole day. I, I just it made my eyes water. It was like it was rank stuff. I just grabbed the wrong oh, thing and just it blew right into me. Greg, Greg, I'll tell you, I think these guys are using the wrong stuff because if they sprayed a little bit of that standing estrus out there, mm, there's nothing better yeah. than that smell in the morning. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's true. That's true. We should make that. We it's should like make like a, We should make like a donut topping with that on for real men. I intentionally spray it up when so it blows back into my face. Oh, it's good stuff. Get you rolling. <laughs> I start. I start lip curling from the stand. He wears it for aftershave in the morning. Now we, now we know what happens there and all. <laughs> there you yeah. go. I bet you he is standing there, paw on the ground, lip curling. Oh, right, I'm <laughs> peeing on my haunches. It's, it gets crazy out there. He's grunting and. <laughs> Hey, Greg, speaking of first editions, I have a guy sitting here at the table that actually may have possibly a first edition Moultrie camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? That thing is old and running. Old, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, very old. Yeah. Uh, Dan Moultrie, you know, he started out with the old 35 millimeter film canister or film cam- cameras in his boxes with a little trigger mechanism that actually would push the button to take the picture and stuff. So wow. uh, they've, they've come a long ways in the last 10 years um, with digital technology and, and uh, you know, s- different shutter speeds and multiple pictures and video. It, it's just the, the camera business has grown so quick and so fast. And it's just like, you know, the the cell phone business or computers, where is it going to take us? What's it going to end up being? Okay, Ryan, um, so you, you have know, a we, second we, edition we, mall tree. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> definitely, it's definitely not one of those tree stump ones, but uh, it was a it's a Game Spy, I think it was the M40, because they, when they came out with that, the 35 millimeter version was also being sold. But right, I, I bought, right. The M40 was the, old, was the old big black models, weren't they? Yep, yep. I had big, two. Of yeah, them. that I'll tell you that I know a lot of people who still have those cameras today. Mine's still that are still working. Yep. The LCD screens went bad in them, or, or you know, they, we don't have replacement parts for them or anything like that. But they'll still put batteries in them and an SD card. And so I don't care what date and time it is. I just want to see what's out there, and they're still working today. Oh yeah, they still wow. run. I got the uh, the old lock box for it, that bear box. 
I gotta be careful yep. what uh-huh. tree. I gotta be careful what tree I put it on though, because I tried a smaller sapling one time. I came back two weeks later, the tree was laid over on its side because how heavy the camera was. But, <laughs> but the damn thing was still taking pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like one of the first laptops that ever come out. You know, yep. it took a skid skid steer or a forklift or skid steer to, to carry the thing around for you. So <laughs> that's great. So, so, Greg, what what actually is your role with Pradco? I mean, are, are you uh, you're in sales, right? Yes, I work in sales. Um, I handle one of the big box stores accounts. Uh, you see a lot of them through this territory. I handle most of the business for them. Everything from presentations, forecasting, inventory control, um, marketing, promotions, all that kind of stuff. So, do you need an uh, assistant? It, <laughs> uh, some days I do, yes. Or a, <laughs> there's a or, yeah, or yeah, a there's, distraction. There's, there's a lot that goes on. There's a lot that goes on with this job. You know, wow. and, you know that's one of the things everybody says. Well, man, you work in the outdoor industry and play with all this good stuff. I bet you get to go on a lot of hunts and fishing trips. No, nope. Uh-uh. No, it's a job. It yeah. really is. It, it's it's you know we have to worry about forecasts. We have to worry about making sales numbers. It's like any sales job. There's the pressures that goes along with it. But, you know, that's what makes it exciting. That's what makes it fun. I mean, how often can you take your hobby and turn it into a job, basically? That's great. So, do do yeah. you focus on, on any, one of those, uh, any one of those brands, or you kind of represent all of them equally? I represent all the brands that we have, yes. Do you have a favorite do I have a favorite? Yeah. Um, I really don't have a favorite. Um, you know, they're, they're all good brands. They're all good products. But, you know, the, probably the most popular is the Moultrie brand uh, with the cameras and feeders uh, because of the, the way technology is going, the way the, the average hunter is scouting their property or the outfitter is, you know, checking their different properties. And, and it, it, you know, with game cameras today, you know, our, our terminology has always been, you know, now you know. Whereas before, you never knew what was out there in the woods unless you was there and actually seen it come by. But now with game cameras in the woods, you know what's out there on your property. You know what deer is going here or what turkey, you know, is doing this or doing that. Uh, that that's the neat thing about game cameras today. So what, what makes a game camera great? If I'm what shopping. makes a game camera great? Yeah. Um, good, good quality pictures, reliability. Uh, I think reliability has to be top of the list. You know, when you're spending that kind of money on a product and you're putting it out in the, the elements, out into the woods, you want it to last and and you know to get some good quality photos off of it. Durability uh, is 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 another plus. But uh, I would have to say, you know, with our package. Uh, everything that we built with Moultrie last year, we made a big commitment um, with electronics, and, and I'm sure you've dealt with this at you know other big electronic houses with computers and things of that sort. That you know warranties is the big thing on electronics because they just don't last. Yeah. Yep. We feel so confident in in our products, in the components that we're putting into our cameras. We're the only company in the industry that's offering a two-year warranty on our cameras. Most other companies in electronics only offer a six-month to a year warranty. We stepped it up this year and said, we're so confident in our products, we're going to give you every camera you buy, you're going to get a two-year warranty with it, you which has really helped wow. helped with that. You can't get that one for a computer that sits indoors in a perfectly climate-controlled no. building. That's for sure for two right. years. Yep. Right, right, yeah. I mean, and, and that's just saying, you know, when we do our research and, you know, we're buying products and components and stuff to build these, we're buying the best that we can buy. And, you know, when we put it into that box, you know, we'll put our stamp seal of approval on it. You, when you buy a Moultrie camera, you're getting one of the best cameras on the market. It, we, we've done a lot of market share on our cameras. And, you know, with uh, brand awareness, that's what I was looking for, the sure. brand awareness name. Um, you know, when we talk to people, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll poll certain people in the hunting industry and, and ask them, you know, when you think of game cameras, what do you think of? And usually the first word that comes out of the mouth is Moultrie. Yeah, Moultrie you know, is we're definitely probably one of the leaders. In the industry, 
What's that? Yeah, Moultrie is absolutely in the conversation. You know I mean? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, and you know, with with brand awareness, and you know, even with aided and unaided brand awareness, you know, nine times out of ten, it comes up. Moultrie is, is number one. We're probably the oldest company. You know, in that business, there's been a lot of them that's popped up in the last, you know, five, six years. Uh, the water's gotten a little muddier, but, uh, you know, we built a very good product and we stand behind our products. So it's, 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 you know, it, it's been a good ride. What's, uh, uh we're just kind of, we're, we're just kind of curious to see where it's going to take us. What's some of the weirdest pictures you've seen? <laughs> some of the weirdest pictures I've seen? Um, can't say I've had anything really strange or well. Actually, no. I did have one picture. I thought I had a camel on my property. <laughs> the, deer, the deer was so close to the camera; it must have been sniffing it or smelling it. But it looks like you know the mouth and the nose is all I caught when you looked at it. It looked like a camel. I was like, man, I got a wild camel running around up there on the property. Wow. So. See those in Heggers. Do you, do you ever get any uh, crazy pictures sent in from like customers or? or around the country oh yeah 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 we get some strange ones you know we get you know a buck mounting a doe or you know a, a coyote catching a rabbit in front of a camera when you go to flying log on to our website moultriefeeders.com i mean you can review pictures of people that submitted to moultrie or go onto our facebook page on moultrie and you know you can see some of the pictures that folks have sent in there's some pretty strange things out there like uh, how about any, one, any the, clowns walking through the woods yeah. or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah, you get clowns every once in a while, trespassers and stuff like that. That's, That's the another worst. great thing with these cameras is, you know, the security part of it. Um, you know, to, to be able to patrol your property and to see who's on your property. And with the addition of our new Moultrie Mobile system, I mean, you pretty much know instantly. Uh, the Moultrie Mobile is a device that hooks up to your camera that will transmit the pictures via electronically to your laptop, your cell phone, to your iPad, or whatever you want them transmitted to. Um, there's, there's, there's three different types of downloads. You can have an immediate download. You can download once a day. You can download twice a day. I set mine up on immediate download. I want to know what's there right then, you know, now. And when it takes a picture, within two minutes, I'm getting a text message on my phone. Moultrie Mobile says you got a picture, and you log into the site, and you can see what's there in front of your camera. Nice. So, you know, in the security aspect of it's great for that, but also, you know, for monitoring the deer, if you want to know, you know, what's moving through your property right then, you can do it all from the, the conference of your basement or your office. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and like that camera I've got that's, that's pushing 10, 12 years old and still taking pictures, that's great, but the most recent camera I actually purchased was a Moultrie, and I, I for the life of me, can't remember the, mo- the make and model at this point, so sorry about that, but uh, right. first, first card pull on that camera resulted in the conviction we were hoping for so i I actually used it for security uh the reason i bought it was because it it supposedly had really good video and i can attest now that it does um and we set it up we caught somebody who was stealing from a cash box at a uh, non-for-profit museum and resulted in a conviction right there. So, oh wow! Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we're getting more and more case stories like that. Uh, we're, you know, we're actually having game departments contact us and purchasing the cameras and set them up for surveillance purposes. You know, catching people trespassing, hunting illegally, or you know, drug rings or you know, things of that sort. So, we sell. We have another. It's kind of a separate division of Moultrie cameras. It's its own brands called Trace, but it's pretty much our same cameras, but they're built in a gray housing versus a camouflage housing. How about and we're that? selling those to homeowners, uh, beachfront property owners, folks that maybe have a cabin up in the mountains but don't get there you know, on a weekly basis or whatever, but being in a gray box form when you mount it to the side of the house or put it on the porch or whatever, it looks like electrical connection box or electrical uh-huh. um, uh, con- connectivity po- box or something of that sort. So people don't associate it with being a, a camera, and therefore they're using it for security purposes to protect their property. Let's switch gears a little bit. We'll go um, to uh, like your personal hunting preferences. What's uh, what's your favorite season? Uh, my favorite season. I love the bow hunt. Uh, I've been a bow hunter for. 
25, 26 years, maybe a little longer. Yeah. Uh, I, I bow hunt through all the seasons. I bow, bow hunt during gun season. I'll bow hunt during the black powder season. I just, I just enjoy archery. Um, my second favorite have to be waterfowl. I really enjoy waterfowl hunting. <laughs> you got Sammy all jacked up. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah. I heard his ears perk up back there a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I heard that archery is a, a passion of yours um, big time. Uh, you've shot competition as well, right? Correct, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was back in my younger days. The wife and I both, when we were living in San Antonio in the Air Force, we traveled quite a bit through Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma shooting archery tournaments and, and enjoying, our, enjoying our lives and, and having a good time. That's awesome. And Catfish is an old competition shooter as well. Oh, he is. Yes. He was. It was. Now about, that, about, seven, retired? about about seventy one. Is he? Re, is he? about seventy one uh, years seven, ago. <laughs> seventy one. I was gonna say, is he? Is he retired or is he just tired? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> well, that same that same shoulder that I told you about is it's it's been on and off for years. It's there's no competition shoulder left in me. That's that's for sure. Oh yeah. Yep, I understand that. Yep, I've knocked it out of place twice and tore the labrum in the back. So it's I still shoot, you know, but I th- there's no 600 rounds left in me. Oh yeah, yep. Very yeah, I'm past that. My eyes have gotten worse, and like I said, I I I, I haven't competed in goodness. I can't say what 20 years now, maybe. And um, you know, I enjoyed the time that that I did do it, and you know, enjoyed it with my wife, and you know. Made a lot of good friends. Uh, would I care to go back to doing it now? Probably not. I mean, I wouldn't mind shooting a tournament every once in a while, but I'm I'm not you know gung ho for it like I used to be. No, it's, I'm the same yeah. way. I mean, I there was a time and place in my life for competition, and nothing to me is a competition anymore. Maybe how many gummy worms I can eat compared to Stevie doing <laughs> on podcast. But, you know, the competition. I'm up by ten right now. Yeah, the competition in me is now gone in life. Yeah. I just shoot to shoot. Yeah, just to, I think. I, I mean, listen to some of the stories that you tell. I think there's still a little bit of competition in you there. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, I mean, he's he's a diva as much as anybody. <laughs> he only eats the uh, the uh, orange and white gummies. I don't like the rest of them. I mean, I have to have a pal sitting out for him, or he doesn't sit down. And I mean, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's he has a list that he needs. Yeah, us to take care of before he gets into the podcast room. Yingling black and tan, he's that's not, it. He, he's, he's not high maintenance, is he? Uh, I mean, for, for a dude. I've been calling a lot of things. Not a lot of killer he is. <laughs> I got 14-year-old rubber boots on right now. I don't. <laughs> I got rubber tire patches on him. I wouldn't say high maintenance, but yeah, we just have to. The only yeah. thing he really requires is some orange monsters and some uh, orange and uh, white gummies. Hey, a real man knows what he likes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. I like, well, I, hear, I, like. I hear those. I, I hear those monsters stunt your growth. That's Ed. why I'm not six foot six anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They've actually made him shrink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, getting back to the archery uh, competition, I actually heard that you're you were a coach of our good friend Tracy Groves. Yes, yes, I uh, have worked with Tracy. I mean, he still calls me today and asking me questions, you know, about should he use a peep sight? You know, he, all these years he's hunted without a peep sight, and he just can't see. And I was like, well, Tracy, you're getting older. Your, your eyes are not as good as they used to be. You need something that's going to help you focus a little more. So, you know, yeah, he's uh, I've, I've, I've worked with Tracy. I've worked with a, a lot of people still today, uh, you know, setting bows up and, and giving them coaching suggestions on form and shooting. And, and all that. I, I enjoy it. So, Yeah. Was he a good uh, student or coach? No, he's not a good student. No, he's not a good student. He's a terrible student. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, Trace, Tracy's a good guy. Yeah, he, he listens and, you know, he, he'll try. You know, if I make a suggestion, he'll try it and he'll work with it. If it's not fitting for him, I mean, he'll try something else. So Yeah, yeah, he's um, great. Yeah. The, the king of experimenting. Yeah. I mean, he just. He likes, try, he likes what he likes. <laughs> he'll try anything. Did you get him into a pizza? Yeah, site? we were. 
I think he did. I think he finally ended up putting a peep side in to hunt this year with. So he was having a struggle this year hitting deer. I don't know why, but, you know, sometimes he'd shoot over top of the backs or, you know, sometimes he'd shoot underneath of them. And I, I think, you know, with him shooting fingers – and not keeping his top body in line and bending at the hips when he's leaning down to take the shot. I think he was just changing his, his point of angle. He's just up in um, his game. They were warning shots. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were. I, I just told him, I said, I think they were just ducking his bow is what it was. So. <laughs> he just wants to, he wants to up his game. I'm going to shoot. He's just going to scare him a little bit. And right, then shoot right. at him when they're running. Yeah, it's getting, it's too easy for him. He's uh, right. I was just with Tracy this evening before we started the podcast here. I was taking him down to one of the farms I have, uh, introducing the farmer. We're trying to get some more properties locked up for his youth turkey hunt. He's got come up here next month. Awesome. Wow. And you guys, uh, you guys predator hunt a good bit together too. Right. Yes. Yeah. I I, I kind of got him started in, and he got the bug uh, two years ago, and uh, he he was like, yeah, this this is a lot of fun. He, he you know, I can enjoy this. So. I think I think you have him spoiled a little bit because he he was telling us the other day he was you know that he turned on his one call and a couple of them came right in and he oh what, I don't know what the big deal is about all this and this you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This stuff's well, easy. Where he lives down there, uh, you know, in central Maryland, I mean, they're they're overrun with a lot of fox in that area down there. So, I mean, you can pretty much walk out back and just kiss your lips together, and you end up calling a fox in from somewhere. Wow. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is a blind squirrel can find a nut in central Maryland when it comes to fox? <laughs> you got that right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always so easy. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so, uh, it is a it is a little easier for those guys than it is for us out here. Yeah. Predator hunting's the way to go. I like night hunting. Yeah. I like being out by myself. Yeah. It's very cool. So, yeah, uh, I do too. Do you have any uh, upcoming uh, hunting trips scheduled? I do not. No, I I, am, I have two children in college, so I am college poor right uh, now. So uh, I'd love to, but you know, I'm I'm kind of waiting for my son to to graduate. Uh, he's at WVU, and hopefully, maybe when he graduates, him and I can go on a elk hunt or something like that together. And then my daughter, she's down at Stevenson University there in Baltimore. She's going to school for nursing. Okay, nice. Yep. Now this is the son I met. Uh, two weeks, two three weeks ago. Correct. Okay. Yes, Sammy. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was my son that was there with me. Yeah. Okay. What's your dream yep. hunt? He's, my dream hunt would be to do a float trip in Alaska for moose Ooh. with a bow. Yeah. With a bow. Yeah, I would love to do that hunt. To stand behind a big tree. Stand by. Yeah. <laughs> well, there <laughs> where they're at, there's not too very many big trees. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you go hunting with Sammy, it, I it's can be like, your tree. He's your tree. <laughs> yeah, Sammy can be your tree, right? <laughs> Just stand on his shoulders, Greg. <laughs> really? <laughs> you might even be able to strap one of them summit tree stands around Sammy. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I, I don't think he'd like it too much when I go try to climb it, no. though. <laughs> I can see you all right now, tarn, tarn, uh, leaf and Sammy, like back in the day when they tarred feathered people. Just throw hot tar on them and a bunch of leaves. Let's put them in some bottom uh, and camouflage. Stand real okay. still. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> How about fishing? What's uh, what's your favorite things to fish? I like to flounder fish. Um, I have a brother-in-law and sister-in-law that have a beach house in Ocean City, and we'll take a week or two and go down there. What? And I'll take my never kayak invited along. there before. <laughs> what is you never on? invited? Well, we'll have to get you down there. We'll have to give it a shot. You're on the hook now. It's like Mr. Eight. You're on the hook yeah. all over again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I do love to flounder fish, and um, but I would have to say my second best would probably be striper fishing for stripers in the Susquehanna Flats or on the bay somewhere in the kayak. Yeah, buddy, that's what we're headed down tomorrow night to try to do. It'll be a good time. Yep. Is it tomorrow? Yep. Is this Thursday? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I just say you're going. Yeah. Wait a minute, you're going there tomorrow night, but then you're going to be in Hagerstown this weekend. I'll be there. Well, when I leave here. I'll get home at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then I go to work at 6. I've got to be at work at 6, which is a pretty good drive for me. I don't have to walk down to my living room 
And then um, <laughs> <laughs> right after right after work, hey, I'll get hey, my. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Do I do I detect a little animosity in your voice? Or Not what? at all. Oh, it's but it's sore right now. <laughs> I don't know how you're getting that over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> but, Nobody in life told me, "Hey, don't don't you know, don't buy a house an hour from work or whatever." Yeah. So, no, and then you know, don't I, break I, your back. after work, I'll get my things together and you know head down to uh, head down to fish for the evening and then fish through the night and then we'll go to Arundel Mills Turkey Expo in Baltimore, Maryland with Tracy. After that, oh, okay. Bass Pro, the uh, the yeah. turkey and fishing classic, and then I'll leave there and head to Hagerstown and fix the laundromat, and then do it over again. Yeah. Okay, it's all bu- right. It's a busy weekend. Where do well, you make sure Will gives you my phone number, and you give me a call when you get up here. Like I said, maybe we can do lunch or something. Yeah, it sounds good. Greg, where do you fish in the bay? What's your favorite place to fish there? Exactly. The exact oh, spot. All over. In the water. In the water. In the water. That's right, Phil. Send a That's GPS like, and the address please. to that beach house. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me let me send my Navionics, copy my Navionics over to you, okay? And, and, and where's the where's the key at under the front mat or the yeah. fake rock <laughs> in the flower yeah, bed? Right. It's <laughs> under the stuffed flounder. You come check out the office, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's on to us, guys. He's got us. He's got us. Our yeah, I'm on to you. Actually, I really enjoy the flats, the Susquehanna flats in my yeah. kayak. Uh, it's it's just so big and it's quiet out there, and you know they're just you can catch largemouth bass, you can catch catfish, you can catch stripers, you can catch perch. There's just all kind of species there, and then you know, when those big cows come in, you know, in the early season, and you hook up with one of them in a kayak, it, it's just a sleigh ride. I mean, you're just hanging on, and hopefully that tires tires out enough that you can get it up on the side and get a picture of it. Yeah, so. I caught I caught both the biggest stripers in my life right up from there, port deposit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, that, it's just I, I, I mean, you know, I I've got all kind of freshwater fishing around here for you know uh, smallmouth and a little bit of largemouth, and you know, I want to go trout fishing. I can go one of the stock ponds or something like that. But there's something about the salt water that draws me down there. I just really enjoy fishing in the salt water. So you take your kayak down uh, uh, flounder fishing. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely hook yep. up with you this year to do that because that was on. Yeah. That's on our to do list anyhow this year. So. Yep. Yeah. We definitely we get together and we'll try that. So I got a, got a few places down there we can go to where I've caught some. So yeah. And then then we we went over to was it Jane's Island there on the it would be the eastern side of the bay. Um, and fish around some of those little islands and stuff, and you catch stripers over there on topwater poppers or soft plastic. Uh, let me, that's let me, a hoot doing that too. Let me stop you real quick, Greg. So I'm looking directly in Stevie's eyes. <laughs> no, as we often do. <laughs> are they are they twinkling at you? Are, are you are you are you intensely listening? Intently listening to what he's saying. Kayak fishing is the way to go. Yeah. You need yes. to get the kayak. Not like this year. So we're yeah, trying yeah. to sell Stevie on buying a kayak. And he, he needs to get one. He's up in I, the I'm, air. I'm on telling it. you. Yeah, I mean, you can get to places that boats can't get to. Yeah. Um, you know, I take my kayak when I get done here after a stressful day here in the office, after my 12 steps down to the office. <laughs> I'll throw the kayak on the Man. on the trailer, or I'll put it on top of the car, go back to the Potomac River, and dump in off the side of the canal, and just paddle around a few islands and catch a couple small mouse, and it's just me in the water and the birds, and it's just quietness. You don't hear in the boats, you don't hear jet skis or any of that kind of stuff. It is. It's hard to explain what it feels like to be on the water on the kayak that close will will found out last year like he fell in love with kayak fishing yes more than ever because like like at two in the morning laying you know sitting on the water is it's just it's there's a there's nothing there's it's it's amazing right. yeah yep. yep the yep. rod it's, the rod's it's getting it's ripped my around tranquility after a very hard day at the office and stuff it it helps me to unwind and calm down so yeah i really thoroughly enjoy it Little outdoor therapy. How far is the Potomac yeah. from your house? But the backyard oh, or what? As a crow's flies, maybe seven, eight miles, something uh, like that. I'm just, just kidding. It's like it's yeah. probably in his backyard. Do you need an assistant? Yeah, but I, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you where on the Potomac, but I'm no, going to tell yeah. you where the Potomac is. Is there, is there blue? Is there blue cats there? Oh yes. Uh huh. Uh-huh. We're down. 
Yeah. Or that word? Well, no, 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 not where I'm at. I'm sorry, blue. I'm thinking channel cat. Yeah, there's channel cat and there's mud cat, but there's no blue cat. But I mean, they're they're further they're further down towards DC in that area there on the Potomac. I got you. But that would be a ride on catching one of those big ones and on a kayak too. Oh, that's right. You said you're in Hagerstown. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I was yeah. for some reason I was still stuck on saltwater down right Sandy Point. No, they saw yeah. this thing in the yeah. Susquehanna Flats. Never mind. Yeah, you're you're two hours east of me to those points. Stevie oh. told me that I could get to Miami, Florida in eight hours. Six. <laughs> no. Six hours driving. <laughs> Six no six and a half because they're ta- they're trying to take me peacock bass fishing the first four days of August. <laughs> if you're driving a DeLorean with a flux, I heard capacitor, that on one of your podcasts, and I was thinking, why are you going to Florida in July and August? Thank you. That's what I said. Yes, there, I'm going to melt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get smaller than what you are now. Yes. <laughs> Listen, to this. I like wow. this. <laughs> You've met your match. I have. Well, I, I, I like it. I, not many people bust on me. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Greg, there's more where that came from, isn't it. there? <laughs> it's it's all in good, dude. It's all in good. Yeah, all right? Absolutely. No, but you know, seriously, it's. I'm thinking it's going to be right around 162 degrees. <laughs> no, it, yeah, well, you better you better find some SPF 100 skin or sunblock. I'm or just going like to put Stevie on my back and wear him as a backpack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, you're not exactly dark tan either. We're both going to die. <laughs> There's a sh- constant breeze down there. It keeps oh, him very I, comfortable. You'll tell me anything to get me to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> you right. Can, he says, yeah. you can lay down in the back of the truck, Catfish. We'll, we'll drive the whole way. It's the Gulf winds. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll buy your dinner on the way down. There's a nice breeze. Well, I'll get you cold iced tea. I'll keep it cold. Yeah. He'll tell me anything to get me to go. <laughs> it's, it's only six hours. <laughs> it's only six hours to it's get there. It's only six hours. Yeah, right. It's not okay. like that. 160 up here, 160 up here, it's the humidity. Yeah. Down there, there's no humidity. Yeah. You're fine. He built in like four or five P stops, too. It's going to be great. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Uh, I, on that note, Greg, we have to uh, kind of wrap up here. And uh, Wait, I, wait. Greg, I want to thank you for your military service. We didn't mention that. Oh, yeah, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, thanks. And it just wasn't four and out. You, you spent... What three, three? You signed up twice after the first time around, correct? Yeah, I, I did a total years. of twelve years. Uh, oh. When, um, you know, like I said, when when I cross trained and then became the gunsmith for the Air Force shooting team, um, at the end of Desert Storm, Desert Shield, then Desert Storm in ninety one, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, the there was a decision made that. You know, we weren't in the job for shooting weapons and stuff like that. That we were, our job was to fly airplanes. And rumor had it they were going to close our career field down and make us go all back on the line as combat arms instructors. And I was like, I'm not too thrilled about that. So they offered a early out program right after Desert Storm. And I went home and said something to the wife and said, "Would you like to move back home?" And her eyes got big as saucers, and she said, "Yeah." So we decided to to leave the military life, and they pretty much paid me to get out and moved me back home, and we started our lives back over again. And that's so. when you met Pradco, and you taught them about the booyah. And that's the where the yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where the is that where the name came from? Ain't that the name of that lore you know, we said? I don't know where that name came from. I mean, that was way before I started working for them. I never really asked about it, but you know, it, it, it's booyah is kind of like a in-your-face type deal, All right. and that's where booyah lures are. They're loud. They're crazy. They're spinner baits. They're buzz baits. They're crank baits. It's you know, it's that they're, off the wall. They make make the fish angry so they attack it. They don't care about it. Yes, yeah. yes. It, yeah, it's it, it's part of a you know. We have these different type of ang- uh, anglers. Is, is what we categorize them and we call them the, the aggressive angler you know it'll be like your tournament fishing guy you know the guy that pulls into the spot and he makes five or six casts and jumps back in his driver's seat and drives off and goes to another spot and makes five <laughs> or six casts and goes off to another that's the aggressive fisher oh, hell, for like that part, and our kayak for that you know, part we got Gary z that dives through the ice with a spear i mean yeah, like, yeah. Talking yeah. About aggressive yeah. fisherman 
<laughs> Sammy's one of those. He'll make five casts and then he'll get it like Dunkin' Donuts or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time to eat the donuts. I don't like well, the you, know, you know what? On Sammy's behalf, he like he my- does he goes to a cl- uh, like a great donut shop. Yeah, but he doesn't like fishing. No, he does as much. No, it, no, but I don't like fishing. It induces narcolepsy. You haven't Sammy. gone fishing with us yet. <laughs> You'll like it if I take it. He fishes. He likes. It. I mean, but it'd be different I'm not if he went going on that peacock fishing. <laughs> no, we're we're we you, already wrote you off. You can't yeah. go because you're. I'm sleeping in your seat. <laughs> I need two Sammy. spots. Yeah. Sammy, you just need to come down here. I got an extra kayak. We'll put you into it, take you back here to the river, and turn you loose and show you what to do, and you'll have a great time. Oh, I know. Uh, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll be what the hanging all night. Well, you know, yeah. you got to be kidding me. Bop, bop. I, I, I could have told you so. <laughs> could have told you you're going to miss that one. <laughs> he always tells yeah. you after the fact. We love him. Uh, yeah. General after the fact. Yeah. Uh, right. Thanks so much, Greg, for coming on and talking a little bit about uh, your Pradco and your job and and Moultrie uh, and, and yourself. I mean, it just um, it's just made for an awesome podcast. I appreciate everything, well, man. I appreciate you guys having me. I hope we uh, we can get back and and do it again. Maybe we can do a maybe a catfish and I can get together and do a kayak fishing one or something of that yep. sort. You know, and maybe talk about different lures we can use on the kayak when you're fishing, how to use them, presentation, and all that kind of stuff. So we're we're looking forward to, to do doing something like that. We got to get some kind of waterproofing, you know, uh, yeah. for this. But but I mean, it's. You know, it's it's pretty close to happening. That's something we're going to yeah, try and make happen. Injected, molded uh, beard cover. So whenever, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm, well, when that, I'm, that's one thing you that's one thing you got over me, catfish. You got the beard. I listen, don't. So. Uh, listen, I can kayak down that river, Susquehanna, so fast that I need a plastic injected beard cover. I get mayflies smashed all over my face. <laughs> I can paddle so fast. <laughs> They're just sticking all over me. Uh, all right, guys. Well, we'll, we'll have to get we'll have to get together this summer and do the Junior Adder or the Susquehanna. Then I'd love oh, to. Yeah. Come on up, man. We'll, we'll we'll get on there and set a date. It'll be good. I think you, I, right. Greg. I think you have like eight new best friends. Yeah, yeah. and bring that extra kayak because we can fill it. Good. I can do that. Yeah, yeah I, I can do that. I got a couple up here. We can get a bunch of us out there. I'm stealing that one. Right, and I can bring my daughter. She's got one of them little pink ones, ten foot pink Davey ones. Said, so somebody can use that. That's the same oh, I'll, use I'll use that one. <laughs> I don't care. Awesome. All right, guys, where can they find us? On the World Wide Web. Yeah. On the World Wide Web. Yeah, Rut and River Pursuit. And, uh, Greg, where can, where can people get to you? Um, you can go on to any of our brands. We have, uh, you know, uh, web pages uh, for each one of our brands, you know, whether it's multifeeders.com, summit.com, night and hail, code blue, or any of our fishing brands. Um, most everybody looks, you know, for our products through lurenet.com, uh, is a website. You can actually purchase products if you can't find them locally in one of the, um, local dealers or any of the big box stores, and they're not stocking the product you want, you can actually purchase products directly from us at LearnNet.com. Steve, you use that? I don't. I will now. Well, there you go. <laughs> he's on it. Now. I was just going to say, <laughs> he's I, he's always, he always knows that stuff. Nope. It's sometimes I can just see right through Stevie's head, and like there's like a glass window. Yeah, you know, like every factory and place has like rejects. Like my sister makes pottery, and if a table. small crack, she gives it to somebody, and it's not there. It was like you know eighty dollar pot. How many injected like lures are there in the world that have a like one eyeball on a jitterbug that Stevie would still use? Uh, I'd use it. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie's like it's all it's all about the action and the presentation. It's nothing about how it looks or the color. It's about the action and the presentation. That's what I've heard, bud. You know where to find yep. us. Send us to all the rejects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey guys, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. I can I can hook you up with anything you might want. So just thank give you me so shout. much. Yeah, you were awesome right. guest tonight, buddy. We yep. appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Right, I appreciate it. Hey, Greg, thank you very much, buddy. Yep. All right. We're looking forward to getting together with you guys, okay? All right. Thanks, Greg. We'll see you. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye.
So where can they find us? Yeah, don't forget to check us out. It's uh, www.rutandriverpursuit.com. On there, you'll be able to get all the information you need to follow all of the uh, podcasts, listen to everything on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, everything you need to know. And make sure you find us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I strongly recommend the Instagram stuff. Yeah. That is good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and on any of those, just search Rut and River Pursuits. You'll find us. Uh, follow us individually, too, because that's where the good stuff is. And by the time you hear this, we will have given away oh. a uh, that's right. an evolution quiver. Elevation, rather. Elevation. Uh, that, that hip quiver. Hip quiver. I yeah. think sweet. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to that winner. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. We're real proud of you. Proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we're looking forward to that. We actually will, it's in a couple of days, so, but this podcast will release right after that. So yeah. it's like crossing the international timeline. Yeah. More streams. Well, yeah. And when you're on Instagram, hashtag Flex 2D capacity. taxidermy so we can see your artwork. 10 4. Later. 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 Peace. Thanks for listening to the Rut and River Pursuits podcast. Follow the R2 Pro staff by searching Rut and River Pursuits on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next episode, we need to see you in the outdoors.